a ready way to say that there are two kinds of historical fiction. One kind of historical fiction is, if you will, the generic kind, which, uh, which is intended to persuade you that this is the world as it was, and then to set in motion uh, private lives within this world. And part of the pleasure of this fiction is, you know, to relive, say, Regency England, or to relive, you know, 18th century India or something. And this could be the literary novel, it could also be a more popular kind of novel. But I think that the best kinds of historical fictions, including Tolstoy, I, I think of Gunter Grassi's Tin Drum, I think of Amitav's Ibis Trilogy, the best kinds of historical fictions have designs upon you. I mean, there is a sense in which you feel this strong authorial presence. When you read War and Peace, it's extraordinary. This man is writing this epic uh, narrative and everybody who has ever reviewed him said that it's literally as if real life were moving on a, on, a, on a platform in front of you. And then what does he do? He stops the narrative dead and proceeds on this 30-page disquisition about the individual and action and history. I mean, in the same way, you have a grass in the tin drum using this metaphor of this arrested child to speak of, in a sense, a, a, a war-torn and post-war Germany and the enormous attempt it had to make to grow into any kind of Republican maturity. And in the Ibis trilogy, you have uh, very clearly, right through it, one of the protagonists of this trilogy is this sense of, of historical wonder and outrage uh, at these events that are being otherwise uh, narrated in so many different registers, you know, comic, sexual, bawdy, serious, violent. So I think uh, the historical fictions that are truly, not literally, but, but truly powerful, are the ones that make no bones about the fact that, uh, that they attend both to the history uh, that they address and also about the large concerns that, uh, that that history creates in the mind of the author. Thank you.